such a nice sound. This is not an Ashmar video. I just thought I would share that with you. This week I'm going to be talking about attractions, sexual and other kinds of attractions to people who we're attracted to and different orientations that people may have, whether they are attracted to he other humans or not. If you'd like to know more, please do stay tuned. Before I dive in talking about orientation and attractions and human on human attraction, I'm talking into my coffee like it's a microphone and the coffee is not the microphone. Let me put that over there. Uh, I want to make sure we understand that people's gender identity, their gender expression, all of that is completely separate from who they are attracted to. If people find themselves attracted to other people at all, I want to make sure to say there are people who are not attracted to other humans. Some people are hyper attracted to other humans. It is a spectrum. Human sexuality, human attraction is a spectrum, just like autism, neurodiversity, and gender. These are separate spectrums that may overlap, but they are different continua. For example, a trans man who is only attracted to other men, he's a gay man. And a trans person who is attracted to people regardless of gender may consider themselves bisexual or pansexual. A trans woman who is only attracted to women would consider herself to be a lesbian. These are separate from their gender identities. I'll do a separate video on gender, so be on the lookout for that one. I am someone who is attracted to people regardless of their gender, and gender is of very little consideration to my attractions. It is an afterthought, if it is of any thought or consideration at all. I have been on a continued evolution with understanding my orientation and my attractions to other people. When I was in middle school, I identified as bisexual. There was a period where I just thought I might be a lesbian. And now I identify as pansexual because I've learned more about gender and sexuality and myself. That understanding of my own attractions has been constantly evolving since I was a very young person. Though the labels and the terms I use to describe myself have changed, one thing has been very consistent throughout all of my life, and that is that I am not straight. There is no question about that. I am definitely not straight. The rest of it, I feel, is fluid as I am, be that my gender or my orientation. As someone who is attracted to the person, regardless of their gender, I will admit there are certain people who I do find more attractive than others. I am neurodivergent, autistic, ADHD, and tend to be more attracted to other neurodivergent people. Also, though my current partner is cis-straight, I tend to be more attracted to queer people and people who are gender non-conforming. I think we're just attracted to more of the same of what we are. It just uh, ha has that attraction there. It's like, oh, this person really gets it. More of my attraction is to, to people who don't go along with norms in society in general, diverging in, in various ways, neurotype, gender expression orientation and otherwise. 
really it is the person, the person I'm attracted to, they, the person, how they act, how they treat other people. If they are kind, if they are genuine, if they are honest, that's the stuff that does it for me and everything else is extra. There may be someone where I see them and I go, ooh, yeah. But then if they open their mouth and something completely appalling comes out, yeah, you lost me. Such a shame. The rules of only being attracted to one gender or there even being an opposite gender or only one person for every person just never made any sense to me. That's also why I am not monogamous. I am polyamorous, though I'm technically only dating one person right now. I am open to the possibility in life that there are multiple and many loves one can have, that love is this infinite concept. So why can you not have infinite love to give? This isn't just a sexual love. Being polyamorous means having relationships with people on many different levels. Some of those relationships are very intimate and have nothing to do with sex. I'm a Buddhist. I don't believe that anything in life is permanent. There is no such thing as forever. Though we may want relationships to last forever, this is setting us up for failure. When the goal of each and every single relationship is forever, considering how many relationships don't last, that means it's forever or failure. What a horrible way to think about our relationships with other people. If it wasn't forever, it was a failure. I've had many relationships with many different people and I've learned so much and grown as a person from every relationship I've ever been in. I don't see those relationships as failures. Some of those relationships were really traumatic and I learned some horrific lessons that no one should ever have to learn. But I wouldn't think that was a failure. I got myself out of situations that were no longer good for me. And that, that's not a su- failure. That's a success. I went on and was better to the next person in the next relationship I was in. Now, though I'm not actively dating anyone, when the next relationship finds me, I will be open to it and hopefully be better in that relationship than I was the last time I dated with the last partner. Here's the thing about all of this, my whole life, because I have more love to give, because gender is not a boundary to my attraction, because monogamy and only being in a relationship with one person at a time is not a boundary to my attraction. I'm called a slut. When I was openly attracted to people of more than one gender, my boss, who is a lesbian, told me that bisexual people don't exist. Just horny people that want to have sex with everyone. Wow. Are sexual relationships really the only kind of relationship people have? Because I have a lot of relationships that have nothing to do with sex. Then admitting publicly that I am not monogamous. I'm accused of being afraid of commitment, just wanting to have a lot of sex, all of these things. Because cishet society thinks everything is about sex. And for some of us, it's not about sex at all. We need to understand attraction, gender, orientation, These things are spectrums and they are dependent on social interpretations. These aren't things we need to impose on other people. We need to give room for people to have experiences outside of the cishet norm. All right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. If you found this video educational, helpful, useful, entertaining, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos each and every single Wednesday so you don't miss an update. If you did find this educational, 
please consider hitting that share button. Hopefully someone else will find it educational as well. Thanks to everyone who does share the content. Sharing is caring. Sharing is really one of the most awesome things you can help do to support this blog and this content. Also, thanks, of course, to the monetary subscribers, Patreon subscribers, YouTube channel members, Facebook supporters who do that little monetary subscription to help me pay for things like website hosting, closed captioning, transcriptioning software, the neurodivergentrebel.com website, all of those tools are made possible thanks to the help of viewers like you. So thanks to everyone in any capacity what you are here supporting this blog. I couldn't do it without you. I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.